Can a spiritual master enlighten you just with one look? Find out now. Hi everybody, Jason here. Today we are going to speak about the Sanskrit Darshan. Now Darshan is the auspicious sight of a spiritual master or guru that bestows blessings and merit upon a devotee or anyone in general. Now why does a spiritual master possess this power? It is because they are seen from the undifferentiated state of consciousness. They are seen from the Atman, to use Sanskrit terminology. They are not seen from the Jiva, the persona, that is usually wound up with emotions and fear and separation, whereas the Atman is complete pure consciousness, free from fear and understands that everything is essentially non-dual and that there is only love. So the gaze of the guru that looks in a loving manner to the devotees is darshan, is what's bestowing blessings and merit upon a individual. And because they see from Atman, and they are essentially looking into your Atman nature. That is what's going on in this process, right? So they understand that every individual has their own Brahmananda, their own subjective reality that they have created within their mind that they see the world from. This is what Maya is. This is the illusion of reality within your mind. So an individual has created kind of a conceptual reality within their mind that they see the world through. And this is what causes a lot of problems in the world. And so a guru understands that everyone has their own subjective version of reality. And so their gaze at you, that when they give you darshan, is piercing that conceptual framework to the core of your being, to the Atman nature. So their gaze is very empathetic because they are not governed by fear. They just understand that each and every one of us have a subjective view of reality that we've kind of bought into, which causes all conflict in the world. Usually, fear subtly governs our relationships initially until we are convinced that there is no threat, especially when we meet other people for the first time. Now, mythologist Devdut Patnaik has an interesting way of explaining this. He explains that people are often seen as deer who fear predators, lions who fear scarcity and seek prey, or as dogs who bark when they are threatened or whine when they are ignored. So this is an interesting way to see human relationships, right? Like any kind of, Devdut Patnaik kind of encapsulates Sometimes the thinking patterns of people, especially when in regards to fear, like we are either a deer, a lion, or a dog, you know, a dog who's always seeking love and when they're ignored, they, they whine and so forth and so on. But see, the guru sees through all of these thinking patterns into your true nature. They don't differentiate between who is a deer, a lion, or a dog if we accept that as kind of a template for some of our human behavior, but a guru can see through that and they see into your true nature. They are not interested in who you are, your world problems, and any of that. That's why when the devotees go to a ashram or a monastery, that they will sit there for hours and just gaze into the eyes of a guru and forget about all of their world problems. This has often been the case all throughout history. So the guru essentially dispels all of their fears just with one look. And it's because that they are seeing the reality from the Atman. And we can all sense when a spiritual master is living from that pure place. It's in the eyes, right? It's in the eyes. That's why when Alan Watts had a picture of Ramana Maharshi in his little cottage, when he would walk out, he would always look at that image. And Alan would say that kind of through Ramana's eyes, Ramana is saying, come off it, man. Don't worry about all of these things. It's all good. Nothing's serious, right? And so it's kind of a reminder too, if you, especially if you have a picture of a spiritual teacher around, it reminds you that life's not serious. And don't take anything too seriously. And don't get caught in this conflict or this drama. Always remain shanti, right? So remember your pure being, your Atman nature. Always come back into contact with that. But... Some people would say it's easier when you're around a spiritual teacher because when you're around them and they are giving you darshan, then it's easier for you to remain in that kind of pure state. But 
The idea here is that, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, is that apparently when you receive darshan from a guru, you can become enlightened, can become enlightened. Now, the way that that's possible, according to the Hindu scriptures, is that if you've done the spiritual work and you've already started to thin out your jiva and you may need just a few touches here and there, then maybe darshan can blast out those last little remnants of personality that you have. That's the idea here. So darshan is not just about receiving blessings, right? Because blessings is just in some sense to do with your jiva, your personality, because you are receiving the blessings of a guru that affect you on a personal level, but it is not the ultimate blessing. It is not the ultimate blessing of coming back into contact with the Atman, the realization of the Atman and fully absorbed in the Atman. And that's where that spiritual work is required on your part. So when you do see a spiritual master or guru, then that last little push into the ultimate reality might be needed and can happen when you meet a spiritual master. Now, the last thing about darshan is the ability to give darshan from beyond the grave. Now, I remember when I first started going to India and I would go to ashrams and this and that. And I remember one ex experience in particular when I was at Ramana Maharshi's ashram in Tiruvannamalai and some foreigner asked a local Indian, why do I feel so peaceful here? Why do I feel so like content and absorbed in the self, in the Atman, when I'm in this particular ashram. And the local Indian told this gentleman that you are receiving darshan from Ramana. Even though Ramana had died a long, long time ago, he said that there's an ability to give darshan from the grave, right? So in the consecrated spaces that a guru or a spiritual master existed, are the places you go to to receive darshan. And from beyond the grave because their energy is still residing in that particular area. Now, you don't have to believe that, but what I implore you to do is to go to some of these places and experience it for yourself and see if there's any truth in what this local Indian gentleman said to this foreigner. And I can tell you that there is something about it. It might be the atmosphere. It might be everyone dedicated to a particular spiritual goal. Or it could be that we are all receiving darshan beyond the grave from all of the spiritual masters. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed that video today. Make sure you like, subscribe, and head on over to my Patreon account if you like my work and want to support it. So yeah, that's it. Let me know in the comments what you think about darshan. Let me know if you think it's real or not real, or if you've even experienced darshan from a particular spiritual master. So I hope you're having a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Shanti, shanti, shanti.